Hello and welcome to the This Is The Music Meets podcast. We've got something a little bit different for you today as we are doing an album playback special with solo star Jay Tennant as we discuss his third album, Forever Roses, in depth. Jay, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on the This Is The Music Meets podcast. How are you doing? Hey, how you doing, Mark? Um, massive thanks for having me back on. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, as we were just saying, enjoying the sunshine. Um, haven't haven't quite melted yet, but I think I'm on the uh, on the verge of it. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, all good. Great stuff. Glad to hear it. Great. So, obviously, we just mentioned there in the intro, your third album, uh, Forever Roses, is finally here. Um, so, how pleased are you um, that it is finally here? Um, yeah. It's- been amazing really like to, just to get it finally released um it was obviously quite a big build up with uh with a, quite a few singles because um i had to kind of do it that way in the end with them um, because like i wanted to release it on vinyl i'd like promised people i'd do it on vinyl and then um obviously there, were, there was this big like um backlog with vinyl like everyone was putting all their orders in and then we ended up with like this six month delay so um obviously that sort of like knocked the um release date back quite a bit for me uh for forever roses but um no it's, it's been amazing to get it out finally and um response has been fantastic so far so uh just waiting for that vinyl to drop now and then um, people can get that in their hands and um get get playing that yeah yeah and, and i guess as well sort of like have another um uh what's the one I'm trying to think you know like a impetus type of thing on on you know drumming up sort of, you know, excitement and, and obviously interest in the album. And he, obviously, it's frustrating as it is that it's obviously that the vinyl's coming later than, than originally planned. Yeah. But I guess just sort of keeps your your sort of name, you know, in, in people's minds, you know? Yeah, that's right. Like, in a way, it works quite well because um, I did the digital release um, a few weeks back uh, and then, like, when the vinyl drops, it it's kind of pops up again. So it's almost like you don't sort of get just one release day. You, you kind of get like two or three or whatever. And, you know, I had um, like another listening party last yeah. week as well. So like these things all, all help to kind of like with the promotion of it, you know, just to remind people it's out there. Because quite often with these releases, like, you know, you put a lot of effort into it and then you've got one day to like push it. And, and like, and then it's kind of like onto the next thing a, a bit, you know, is, is how yeah. it feels like. But um, obviously you, you want to kind of keep it in people's minds, like you say. So, yeah, it's working quite well, I think. Yeah. Great stuff. So we're going to play um, the opening track um, from the album, uh, which is called Journey Into the Night in a moment. Um, but was it always important for you to sort of like make a big statement on the opening track, like what, like how I feel that you have done? Yeah, it was definitely uh, that. That was the idea. So if that's how it comes across, then I'm I'm really happy about that. And um, yeah, I think once I had that tune written and in the bag, uh, like recorded, I felt like that's the album opener. You know, like it, it kind of sets my stall out. I think uh, big riffs, big chorus, big passionate vocals, passionate lyrics. You know, everything that I try and do really. And um, I felt like it it did all of that, ticked all the boxes. So. Um, yeah, uh, and like, I, I think with the whole sort of journey into the night, it's a, it's a good kind of title to sort of kick off the album with, I think, as well. So, uh, yeah, that was always a plan, yeah. Absolutely. And here we go. This is Journey Into The Night. So the next track um, is obviously called Star Chasing. Um, there's like a, a hint for me um, of like you too. Uh, in in sort of in some aspects of like the sound maybe like earlier um you two um have they always been like a like a, a big influence on on like how you try and write your songs or did that just sort of you know is it kind of like purely coincidental so i think like i always come back to this like um i think the music you grow up with it kind of almost like bleeds into you you know it becomes part of your life yeah, um, yeah. the fabric of your life if you like and then um, and it's sort of always there so uh, I d- yeah I definitely grew up listening to them so I think like in terms of trying to go for a bit of an anthemic quality if you like uh, that that's there 
And um, yeah, like I guess, you know, they've written classic songs, you know, big classic anthems, if you like, so 80s and, and early 90s. So um, I think that's always kind of been there. So I, I don't know, it's not always a conscious thing, but it, it like subconsciously almost, it's probably something that, that pops up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I, I mean, I think it's a, it, it sort of follow it obviously, like maybe we'll, we'll talk about the sort of the track order, like how, how you come about that later on. But I think, you know, to sort of straight away, like be like, bang, here we go. This is me. This is my first two songs on the album. I think um, really captivates everybody. And I think you've definitely achieved that here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Again, like th that definitely was the plan. I think like, you know, start big and a uh, bit of impact, like definitely, you know, the first few tunes really, um, so yeah, that that was always my thinking, really, like to have Star Chasing second track in. It's a little bit moodier than uh, Journey into the Night, a um, bit faster, I think. But um, it, like again, it has those sort of similar qualities. Um, so yeah, that it, that was the plan. Yes, to sort of start big, if you like. Yeah. So obviously for the next song um, on the album, you really bring the the, uh, the tempo down. It's obviously called uh, Star City uh, Serenade. Um, so was it always kind of like in the back of your mind to be able to sort of, you know, keep the listener guessing as, as to what is coming next? Not obviously we've sort of mentioned there, we've got, you know, sort of quite quick uh, up-tempo songs to the first couple of tracks. And then there we go. We've got something that's a little bit slower. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I do always, like I spend a lot of time thinking about the, the track list in order and um, I do want to keep the listener engaged, you know, like on, on the journey with me, if you like. So, um, yeah, I, de I definitely, again, sort of thought about that and a um, bit of a change in tempo, like you say, and a change in feel of, of the tune. It's a bit of a lighter number. Um, so yeah, that, that was also in, in my thoughts. And um, you know, it's there's there's only really a couple of ballad sort of tracks on there. And and I think when you're thinking about an album, like track three is a bit of a, a traditional snot slot to kind of have a bit of a a ballad in there, you know. So um yeah, that was also part of it as well. Did did you ever kind of like obviously you've said there about the traditional um you know, like position for for, for that, that type of song. But did you ever think about, um, do you know what, I'm I'm just going to go and do my own thing um, and just sort of, you know, effectively like rip the rip the rule book up, so to speak? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And um, that might be, I'll probably do that a bit more on album four, I think. Um, it's a little bit more like, yeah. So I think with Forever Roses, I was trying to make a classic record that, you know, for me would kind of stand the test of time if you like um, yeah so that was what I was going for but um yeah I know what you mean like you don't have to kind of follow suit with what's what's gone before so I think you'll probably see that a bit more on album four um where I just kind of flex a bit more what I want to do so yeah yeah it's a good shout <laughs> great stuff so um we're gonna bring um the next the next song that we're gonna play obviously off the album is uh is obviously polka polka and also we've just been sort of talking about sort of different um uh styles and, and and sort of tempos and stuff and i think this is really evident um obviously on this this track because obviously you've got the sort of nile rogers sort of funk inspired um guitars which obviously which you know blew me away I think I remember telling you at the time you know when we were chatting and that what how you know just to say just blew me away um and obviously the reaction to the song has obviously gone gone down a storm I think it's probably fair to say but obviously one of the things obviously with a title I guess it's it's fairly obvious in in some respects obviously there's plenty of references to to cards and, and aces uh, and, and obviously poker as well um is this kind of like based on sort of like a like a personal experience that you've had of yours or maybe something that you've observed or, or anything at all? Um, it's not actually, no. It's it's just like a, it's an imagined story, if you like. Um, quite a lot of my songs are really. Um, like I read a bit and I watch films and stuff and I kind of absorb sort of influences from that. And I'm quite a visual person, so... Yeah. Like and hopefully that comes across in the lyrics and stuff. Um, I try and sort of create a bit of a a world or a story or a scenario or something, you know. 
and, uh, and that's what Poker Polk is about, really. So, um, yeah, like you say, it is set in, in the casino and nightclub, and, you know, it's a bit of a, a double meaning on the, on the title there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just I just wanted to kind of play with that a bit. And um, obviously there's a bit of a nod to the Rolling Stones there with, um, like, some of their tunes from, like, Exile in Main Street. Yeah, in yeah, particular. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a Rolling Stones style um title like twilight tango as well so it's, it, it is a nod to them but also doing my own thing a little bit so um but yeah i i wanted to just kind of you know it it's an imagined story if you like but um you know i think it's an interesting scenario and whatnot so uh yeah hopefully it works and and like sound wise again it was kind of like track three oh we're doing something different and then oh what's this track four you know like I wanted to kind of like you said before keep the listener guessing a bit with like well you know oh he's doing a few different things on this album kind of thing it's not all just one sound you know so yeah that was the plan yeah yeah definitely and I think um obviously you've said there that it's um you know sort of like an, an imagined um story but I think one of the things that, that I find found quite is um sort of interesting about the song that it was for me anyway it was instantly like relatable like you know you can imagine the, the, like the scene effectively going on oh cool you know yeah so, yeah, yeah I feel, I, you know so yeah I think you've done a great job of it oh thank you mate I appreciate that um it means a lot thank you no worries at all so we've gone from sort of the swaggering sort of start of you know with the first couple of albums we've now got a bit of funk and then you then go back um to sort of like the swaggering sort of uh typical uh indie guitar sound in uh in the black angel um which obviously is a really really upbeat tune do you find it easier to sort of like write that style of song like in, in black angel compared to say poker poker um <clears throat> I don't know really. Like, I remember writing both of them, and um, like, they sort of came together quite sort of, you know, not like easily as such, but <laughs> yeah, like it wasn't too difficult if you like. And um, I, I think it's sort of like different sides of the same coin if you like. Um, so th- they are like quite contrasting tunes, I think. But um, but it's still me and and you know, the stories and that, it, it's still me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I hadn't really done anything like Poker Polka before. So I think that was a bit more of like, this is a bit different for me. Like, um, like you say, the Black Angel, like, I've done a few tunes that are of a similar sort of sound, if you like. So, yeah, um, there's something in that, I suppose. But um and, and like trying to break a bit of new ground with the, with Poker Polka, but yeah, I felt like the Black Angel was was probably one of the strongest tunes I've ever written, and um, so I, that was why I kind of held that one back um, and put it out as the last single on the album, like before the album launch, because it was kind of like the key track, if you like, to yeah, put out there sure. for me. Like so, yeah, great. Sure. And, and 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 just sort of. Um just sort of moving away a little bit from, from Forever Roses. Um, how do you sort of like view the current UK, um, you know, sort of like guitar scene, sort of like the, the new music uh, sort of like scene, obviously that, that yourself are, are very heavily involved in? Um, because that for me, there, there does seem to be like a real buzz about, you know, guitar music um, in, in general at the moment. Yeah, I, I'd echo that, I think. Um I think you can see that like certainly through Twitter and that kind of, it, it's still a, a largely sort of underground movement, if you like. Um, I don't think that the public at large is really aware like that there's there's a lot of great guitar music like still being made. I, I think you kind of generally like the public sort of, you know, through the media and whatnot, you always kind of hear our oh, guitar music's dead and all this. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's been said so many times, but it's, you know, it's such a cliche, but um, I think like time and again, you know, it keeps coming back and, and there's a lot of strong um, new talent coming through, a lot of bands, solo artists, like all pushing forward. So um, I think it's a really, really good time, like exciting time. And, and you are starting to see a bit of that kind of 
pushing through a bit, you know, like you had Skylights playing this massive gig in yeah. in Leeds the other night and, you know, bands like that starting to kind of get out there. The Heavy North as well, I think they just got published in Classic Rock or something. So yes, um, sorry, just yeah, starting to make a little bit of headway there on the scene, which is amazing to see. So, uh, yeah, long may it continue, yeah. And is, and is there anyone else, obviously you've mentioned uh, Skylights and the Heavy North, are there any other bands that are, or solo artists that are sort of catching your eye that you're sort of like, yeah, I'm, you know, really, really... Yeah, definitely. Like, what they're doing. Um, I've mentioned them before, but Arcade, Arcade State, like, yeah. you know, if they don't make it, there's something massively wrong because the, the talent is immense, you know, so definitely those guys. Um, can't wait to see what they, you know, keep doing next. Um, the Shed Project as well, like just uh, released, you know, one of the albums of the year, like for me on the indie scene, and um, they, they just keep getting bigger and better with the gigs and stuff. So definitely them as well. Um, and like, yeah, there's there's loads of exciting sort of talent around. Shout out to some of the some of the ladies as well. Um, so like Ines, Lissy Taylor, uh, Laura Jane, Jen Dixon, like they're all pushing you know working hard and and you know reaping the benefits i think at the moment starting to sort of emerge and stuff so um and then like yeah the bands like the drift from birmingham um, and yeah. love what they do so yeah there's, there's there's quite a lot going on that's that's exciting i think yeah definitely yeah couldn't couldn't agree with you more and, and with all them names that you that you've mentioned i'm ma- massive fans um of them as well so i think um as you say, it's a very, very exciting time. And let's hope that, um, you know, that there is that crossover, you know, that they, these artists do get a little bit more um, exposure um, in, in the future. But anyway, let's, let's enough of everybody else. Let's, um, All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let, let's talk, uh, go back to Forever Roses. So um, obviously the, the next, the next track on the album is obviously called Sparks. Um, I sort of love uh, the drumming, on, on it so it's simple but really effective as well obviously a big big pounding drum and and obviously the, the guitar riff and uh, as, as well on it is 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 is, is brilliant um and obviously all them sort of you know the drum in there and and, and the guitar riff mixed together obviously it it real gives it a real sort of you know um uplifting uh sort of like banger effectively in, in the anthem i mean was that was that always you know how how do you go about writing songs is it do you know instantly when you've written it that that's going to be something that's going to be, you know, that's going to be big? Um, yeah, I think, I think like you tend to kind of get a good idea with that. Um, and like at the time, so I just released Spectre, which like we'll, we'll come on to, but like in the sequence of the singles, like I just released uh, Spectre in the April and like that had gone down really well with people, like, you know, a lot of people sort of got into that track. And um, so the idea with Sparks was like, we were, we were going into the summer. So it was definitely, like you said, you know, it's quite a beat sounding. And uh, that was the idea, like, and have this big stomping riff. Cause like, I wanted to follow on from Spectre with something that I felt was, was sort of almost, you know, equally as strong. So I wanted a big riff and like you say, it's got those, those pounding drums on there, which, like fair play to my producer really like he's he's kind of key on like the drums and stuff like that so um yeah I think it works well and and it was definitely intended as a bit of a big bright sort of summer anthem if you like so um and the, like there was a video that sort of um mirrors that with a lot of kind of summary sort of image, imagery so uh yeah that was the plan and and I think yeah like I, I tend to have a good idea if I feel like a song's gonna you know turn out good or whatever and, and that was one that I felt good about definitely yeah yeah sure and uh here it is this is Sparks from Jay Tennant's third album Forever Roses so what um what what can you tell us um about the recording process for the album you know where, where did you record it I mean obviously you you've mentioned um you know obviously that that you're obviously releasing the singles that you know throughout drip feeding sort of you know throughout the year type thing was it was it all done sort of pretty much in you know like one like a couple of sessions type thing or was it a little bit more you know sort of prolonged i guess is but maybe the album as a whole no um yeah it, it was uh, it was quite a long period of time actually like um 
I, I kind of I try and get in the studio once a month if I can like that's a kind of work ethic if you like that I try and do to to kind of keep it rolling for myself yeah. as much as anything yeah. like creatively um so so yeah it, it was recorded over um a while you know like yeah. probably a year or more or so um so yeah like um I recorded it in Deadline Studios in Leicester um so Adam who sort of runs the studio there he's he's my producer and um like he's a bit of a genius really so um which you know hopefully you can hear on the tracks like the production and everything and um, I think he's he's just got a great ear for for what works in terms of backing and stuff and um like some of his like lead solos are just like amazing so yeah um I've just kind of kept going back there really because um he just always delivers so yeah and almost as well in in terms of um with, with the songs are you already going to the studio with the song effectively complete you know you've got got the idea in your head or are you going to the studio I'm, I'm, i need to write a song basically and, and that's what i'm going to do for the time that, that, I'm, that i'm in there no so uh, yeah i always turn up with a finished song basically yeah so um you know the the melodies the lyrics and um, I, I will always like write some guitar riffs um ahead of the session um, and and often you know have a drum beat in mind as well so the whole structure is is like there sort of ready yeah. to kick off with basically yeah because um i think when you get in the studio and like it, you know if you're a signed band and you've got a bit more luxury of time and and what if you, you know say you book the studio for a week or something i think you could have a bit more time to experiment maybe mm -hmm. but i think for me like you know i've booked a a four hour session essentially and, and you know we, we're trying to get a tune down in that time so um it's important that it's all all ready to go really so that's how i do it yeah oh sure oh great stuff so just sort of moving uh, on then to the um well effectively to to like this the, the slowest song i guess is probably the right way of saying it on the album um it's obviously called stone cold um and it's got a, a fact you just mentioned your, your producer adam there he's done a great Great job with the uh, the lead the lead guitar riff on that. Um, it sort of reminds me um, of like love and loss. Is 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 that kind of lot like sorry uh, yeah love and loss. So is is that a fair sort of summary and an assumption of, of the song you're going for, for effectively both sort of feelings emotions in in in, in the one song? Yeah, definitely. Uh, th that was like the plan really. Yeah, so uh, it is quite an emotional song and. Um, it was very much my sort of attempt to try and write a classic, really. Um, the, there wasn't really, apart from Star City Serenade, there wasn't really any uh, sort of slower songs. And, and I felt like, you know, I need some sort of a ballad. And, and it was a challenge to myself to try and write something that I felt, you know, sounds like a bit of a classic. So yeah. hopefully people will agree with that. But, um, but yeah, it definitely is... Um, a song of sort of love and loss, but there's some hope at the end there as well. So I, I think it's about, you know, kind of like rejection and whatnot. And um, and then like reaching out for, for someone better that, you know, you believe in and, and and all that kind of stuff really. So yeah, that, that was what I was going for. Yeah, definitely. So it was kind of like a, a bit of a, a subconscious effort then on, on your part to, to try and write a song like that. It wasn't like something that just, I've heard people before say like just fell out of the sky type thing, or is that is that is that not really fair? Yeah, so um like a bit that one was a little bit like more spontaneous, really, yeah. out of all this all the songs on the album. It was it was really a case of like I don't really do this enough, probably. Um I'm I'm usually quite sort of thinking about ideas mm -hmm. ahead and stuff, but with this one, I, I just took my guitar and sat down um and like started playing a few chords round and then um in 20 minutes like that that's the finished song essentially like oh, very obviously I, like, I, went, I went away and wrote the lyrics like after like you know properly but um yeah. but the whole the melody and the structure and everything was uh was all all done in like 20 minutes so uh yeah so it was a, a definitely like you say a bit more of a subconscious spontaneous sort of song really in terms of how i wrote it yeah Okay, and here it is. This is Stone Cold from Forever Roses. So is there um, like a theme 
uh, like to, to the album at all? Because like a, you know, like a message that maybe you're trying to get across um, to the listener through your lyrics at all? Yeah, I think so. So um, it, in a way it's, a, you know, there is a theme and it's a bit of a concept record, if you like. It's a very kind of, it's almost like my version of the Colts Love album, if you like, because, you know, there's a very sort of love theme throughout there. Um, and, uh, yeah, all the songs do tie together as a kind of story. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just about um, it, it, the whole album was really trying to do this big romantic gesture, really, like and, and trying to, you know, believing in someone and, and kind of kind of going, you know, like I've done all this for you essentially that was like yeah. the kind of like whole plan behind it really yeah so sure and um, and sort of comparing you know like your, your your two previous albums is this something that you've quite enjoyed trying to write a bit more of a concept album or do you think obviously you've mentioned um you know like album four and and, and possibly album five as well maybe and not too far uh you know off in in, in the future would, would you consider maybe doing it again, you know, like a concept style album or, or would you look to mix it up on, on, on future releases? I think um, it, it probably, it is something that sort of makes sense to me really where like songs fit together. So definitely on my first album, um, that was the case. Escape Roots is a little bit more eclectic, but all the songs are kind of, there's a theme of escape in, in there. Mm -hmm. So I think it definitely is something that I try and, and do because I think like I think I struggle with like just sitting down and, and trying to write 10 or 12 songs and just going oh that's an album like I, I feel like for me it's got to kind of hang together as a like a, a, a cohesive sort of story yeah, or something yeah, sure or it's yeah. got to be a link there to make sense of it and um, for me that's just how I write really so um so yeah album four is nearly done and it's almost like it's a follow on really from Forever Roses. It's it's definitely around the same sort of theme. It's it's a little bit sort of darker and a bit more cinematic, if you like. But um, it's, it's a follow on album. And then, yeah, album five might be a bit different. I, I'm on like the early stages of kind of writing for that. Um, I've got a couple of tunes in the bag, but we'll, we'll kind of see how that shapes up. But um, but yeah, I, I think there's definitely something there about for me, like about making an album work as a whole piece of work I think yeah that's what that's what I tend to try and do and probably will keep doing that yeah yeah sure well I think you've um you've you've, you've definitely pulled it off um with you know with everything that's going on and, and I think it's it's fair to say as well that you know each song does flow into the next one as well which I think is you know which is what you've you've pretty much said there to be fair oh thank you yeah um that's definitely definitely was the plan like I think it wasn't, it's not like a chronological story, if you like, it's not, it's like chapters from a book or a film in a way, like, um, but they're not in the, like, in the right order, if you like. Yeah. like so that's just how I, how I sort of chose to do it. But yeah, I did want the songs to sort of flow into each other well. And uh, so if they do, then that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. And obviously the, the next song, um, we obviously mentioned it earlier, um, obviously Spectra. Um, it's obviously it's a fantastic tune and um and, and obviously it's been said um by a lot of people um it should be uh, the theme tune to the next James Bond movie. Um so when you hear um sort of people saying things like that about your music, what's what's like your like reaction to that? Oh, that's amazing, you know, like um you, that's the kind of stuff you sort of dream about is for people to say that, you know. So it, I, I don't take that lightly. It means a lot. Um, I mean, like there was, it was a bit of a cheeky nod to Bond with the title, like <laughs> obviously, um, but I didn't expect for that, for people to kind of say that, you know, so um, no, like that's, that's humbling and, uh, you know, I massively appreciate anyone saying that. So uh, does, does genuinely mean a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's obviously, it's a fantastic tune and I think, um, uh, you know, when you look at the um, uh, well, what's the, uh, the streaming uh, figures on on for the album, this is the one that that's obviously um, has, has clearly has been the most successful. I guess is the right way of saying it because obviously people are are listening listening it, to it uh, quite a lot. So, would, are you has has it done as well as what you thought it was going to do, or 
or, or, or not? Um, so I think, like, in terms of being the most popular of my tracks, I think, like, that took me by surprise. Like, when I wrote it, it was it was just another another tune, if you like, um, in the bunch of tunes that I was writing. Yeah, so yeah. that took me by surprise. I mean, uh, but, but, like, I'm grateful for it. Um, but, yeah, like, it's, you, you never really know how a song's going to go down with, with an audience, you know. And, like, some of the other tunes that I thought would be more popular than they have been you know it's, you just you never know so like uh journey into the night the black angel i felt like they were going to be big songs and like but like you say the the streams are, are much bigger on spectre so you just gotta just gotta go with that and um if anyone's listening to your songs it's uh you know it, it means a lot so I, i'm happy with that yeah, oh, great stuff, and and uh, we're obviously we're gonna we're gonna play that for for you now. This is Spectra from Forever Roses. So obviously, um, as you mentioned earlier, um, the album is obviously going to be um, coming out very very soon um, on vinyl, um, and I think that you can still uh, pre-order. Cop- I think I'm right in saying copies over on your Bandcamp page. Um, yeah, that's right. So. Was it was it always uh, like an ambition of yours to to have a have an album um, on vinyl, um, or did or did it just you know just feel right to, to do it now? Um, I think like I hadn't really thought about it previously in it that much, but um, I did kind of see that vinyl was um, you know popular again, if you like, and yeah. um, and that people are. Are interested in in vinyl and that's amazing because you know uh, I kind of I think like a lot of us um sort of respect the album as like a a, a kind of piece of art if you like mm. and you've got the artwork and all that you know it's it's not all about just listening online for for a lot of us still Definitely. and um I think that's important um and yeah so I think I just like asked the question one day on Twitter like maybe a year ago or something and it just kind of put the feelers out there like if I if I were to sort of try and put this next record out on vinyl like would there be any interest in them I think I did get sort of like 80 or 100 positive responses so you think okay this might might be a go with them so that was really kind of what what swung it if you like and and then I I also wanted to do it as a you know as something to remember and hold on to you know as a a, a kind of proper I don't know, just like a, an album that you're going to hold on to, you know, like yeah. with, with a nice visual, nice um, vinyl and whatnot. So, yeah, that was that was all in my thinking, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and you're saying, um, just mentioning there, like visually, uh, I think that's one of the things that, that I've always noticed with, with, with all of the, you know, the singles and previous releases as well, but, you know, not just this sort of, uh, sort of period in, in, in what you're doing musically, but visually when you look at the cover artwork you you clearly put a lot of time and effort into you know in, into sort of trying to create um you know something that that is quite uh what's the word like striking if you know do you know what I mean if, if, if that makes sense um as well so are you, you are, I'm guessing that you're, you're quite big on on your art I've seen recently you've been doing a, a fair bit of photography as well is, is that a, is that another passion of yours no, so um, I, I like I don't actually like do any sort of photography myself, but like and all the all the images I use are, are kind of like one you know they're like free, um, oh. <laughs> free to use if you like. Um, yeah. I just spend a bit of time finding something that I think works visually. Like it's, it's got to work with the song visually for me. Yeah. So, like say so, yeah, I do I do spend some time sort of doing that and like designing the, the covers and whatnot. So, cause I want them to, to kind of be a bit eye catching and, and sort of like stand out a bit if you like. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely all part of it. Yeah. Great stuff. So we're going to, we're just going to briefly move away uh, from, from the music and we're going to throw some quick fire questions at you and, and just find out a little bit more uh, about, about Jay, about Jay Tennant. So what is your favorite film? Oh, that's it. It's a tough one. Um, like, there's so many classics, aren't there? Um, but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll just go with Drive for now. I think um, it's uh, it's one of those films that you, you kind of watch, and it's like, wow, like 
you know, when it finishes, you're like, wow, that was a great film, wasn't it? So it uh, stays with you. So I'll go for Drive, yeah. Great choice. And uh, are you going to be having, are you a Chinese or are you an Indian uh, food lover? I am both, actually. Like, they're, they're both amazing. Um, I'll probably choose Chinese, I think, overall. That would be the one that I favour the most often, yeah. And who is uh, sort of Jay's uh, or oh, hero, I guess, music, musical or or otherwise? Um, God, tough one, but like, I mean, there's there's a lot of legends, aren't there? But um, I'll say Johnny Marr because uh, you know he's still doing it, still smashing it. What what a, an all time legend, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I, I saw. Um, I, obviously, I didn't go, but I saw that he was at the um, British Summertime uh, Festival at Hyde Park and. Saw him there a few years ago. Front for Sporting Who, um, fantastic, great, obviously curate of so many great songs, and and obviously as you say, absolute, absolute legend. And who is kind of like a villain for you at the moment? I, I can think, I can think of a few that are, that are probably shared uh, nationwide at the moment. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, I don't know. How do I answer that without being political? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, be, be one of those guys, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you uh, any more there, to be perfectly honest. So, so back to the music now, after um, hearing uh, some of Jay's uh, favourite films and, and, and favourite foods and stuff. So obviously Exile Central um, sort of sounds a little bit as if maybe there is a, a glimpse into the future maybe of what might be coming up on as we've mentioned previously um album four and um an album five is that always a thing for you that you're looking to strive for to to sort of keep you know keep trying to move your sound forward and not just going with you know like the same sort of you know classic sort of like indie anthem type type song yeah definitely um so like i think there was it, it was very much about trying to do something that sounds a bit different. Um, Exile Central, yeah, like it, it doesn't really sound like anything else on the album, and, and that was the idea, you know. And um, and yeah, like you say, that that ties in with trying to keep moving forward, trying new things, new sounds. So I think yeah, like so album four, um, I've released a couple of tracks off there already, but. I think they're different to anything on Forever Roses. And I think that, you know, you'll find that continues. You know, I'm trying some different stuff out um, because you've got to keep moving forward, I think. So, yeah, I definitely was sort of going for some classic sounds on some of the tunes on Forever Roses. But um, I think you'll find, like, the next album and the one after that is is, is more sort of moving forward and, and trying some new stuff out, yeah, so. You're right there. And here it is. This is Exile Central. Now, I know it's not actually on this album, um, but I didn't, I sort of felt I had to ask you and, and I couldn't, end, you know, not have it asked on, on as part of this interview today. Um, but obviously Trust uh, was obviously your sort of last single release, I guess, effectively you would call it. And obviously um, it got a spin on the legendary uh, John Kennedy's uh, Radio X uh, show. So, I mean, what was what was that like when you found out that that you know such a, a legend of, of of promoting new music was like, right? I like that song. I'm I'm going to give it a play. Oh, it was amazing. Um, like I, I've been trying for a couple of years really to get on his show. So to finally get on there was was amazing. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, he replied back to me like pretty quickly saying, oh, I love the track, I'll, I'll play it this weekend. But I, w I was kind of like, didn't quite believe it really. So um, <laughs> like I, d I only found out like on the Saturday that he played it on the Friday night because um, he didn't sort of say exactly when he was going to play it. And, and like, I just couldn't really believe it was going to happen. So, um, but yeah, it was just amazing really. Like things like that don't happen that often. And um I think, you know, when you, you put the work in and whatnot, for things like that to happen um, means a lot, genuinely. So, and like you say, what a legend. Um, he's, he's, you know, given so many new artists and bands, like, um, 
some sort of exposure on his on his show. So um, and, and you know that's uh, it means a lot. Like absolutely, yeah. Yeah, definitely, and um, and 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 personally, obviously, as as, as a uh, as, as a fan of of yours, not uh, about about time too. In 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 my opinion, that you know you should be getting on that show. And obviously, as we've mentioned, you know, before there is obviously such a great, uh, you know, great, um, you know, a lot of, a great selection of of either bands or or solo artists at the moment. And hopefully, you know, you're all going to keep you know pushing forward and and you know knocking down the door. Um, so to speak, and that becomes more of a of a regular occurrence, you know. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, so yeah, like you say, I mean, Trist, it, it got played on on his show. It also got on XS Manchester, which was first time for me as well. Yeah. So it, it, it in a way, it's my most successful single, really. Like in, for getting those those couple of uh, radio plays. So, um, and yeah, like it, you know, you, you just don't know when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen. So. Um, it's amazing, and and like you say, let's hope that that sort of continues. Like and and other other bands and artists, kind of start getting onto that those shows uh, a bit more often. Yeah, like you say, definitely. Yeah, great stuff. And but we're just gonna um, sort of divert a little bit away um, from Forever Roses um, because I can't not mention uh, the Extra Roses uh, CD. Uh, that, that obviously you released as sort of like a sort of to complement uh, the album, I guess, effectively. Um, again, as as you'd expect, it, it's obviously full of full of great tunes. Um, w- was there ever a point where you maybe thought about including the songs on Extra Roses on Forever Roses, or was it not not ever really a consideration? Um, so I wanted. Forever Roses to be 10 songs basically and and kind of leave you wanting more maybe um, and um, yeah I, I felt like all the songs like fit together well and, and it seemed like a complete piece if you like so yeah. but I had recorded some of the, some of those other tunes like in the same album sessions so um, and then I kind of thought oh, I'm not sure that one sort of quite fits on the album or, or whatnot so yeah. I, like I definitely held held them back and um, and then thought like they were they were recorded in the album sessions and it, and like they're on the same theme and and it's so I, I wanted to do this kind of companion piece CD if you like and um, yeah it was just something I thought of as well with the vinyl delay was was what what can I do in the meantime and um, it seemed like a good idea so I put that um, I think the CD was out around March or April yeah. or something so. Um, so yeah, people have, have had that, um, and, and it's uh, like a, a companion piece with the album. So um, yeah, and, and you can still order. It. There's still a few copies left, but they're they're nearly all gone now. So um, get on that Bandcamp page quick if you do want one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And we'll um, we'll include uh, the, the link uh, to not just to the Bandcamp site, but also Jay's other social media as well. In our um, in our episode. Uh, in the episode bio, but 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 before we go any further, uh, obviously we we've, we've just mentioned there about um, uh, John Kennedy with trust, but um, also as well off of Forever Roses, um, Robert Carlyle, uh, we've we've uh, obviously we've we've endorsed uh, Salvation. I mean, obviously one of the the great British actors, um, and there he is on a is it Bobby's. Bobby's Saturday Bangers or whatever, whatever I think it is. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, you know, I mean, wow. I mean, how, how did that feel? What a legend! Yeah, I, oh, it's amazing. And and like again, totally out of the blue. So, um, you, yeah, you just never know, really. Um, he he shared Star City Serenade and also Spectre at the time. Um, yeah. But that you know that, that's sort of a year ago or whatever now. So. Um, yeah, for him to, to pick Salvation as well. Like, I just totally didn't see that coming at all. But, yeah, what a legend. Um, and, again, it, you know, what he's doing to kind of raise the profile of, of like, new um, new music is uh, is amazing. So, uh, yeah, well, hats off to him, you know. What, 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 what an absolute legend, yeah. <laughs> and um, looking back... Um... Sorry, I've jumped a question there. Sorry. Um, so what, what are your plans 
for the remainder of of, of, of 2022, obviously we've got um, the vinyl release. Obviously, that's going to be keeping you very, very busy to be doing that. Um, are you looking at like maybe getting lots of gigs, maybe potentially together to promote the album, or is it going to be um, effectively more like writing, recording for you know for for album four and, and with a view for album five as well? It's yeah, it's probably going to be more more that I think um, writing and recording. So um, I'm sort of quite feeling quite productive at the minute with some of the like new songs that are coming through. So uh, just just going to kind of keep cracking on with that I think um so that's probably going to be my main focus for for the rest of the year yeah okay cool and and and, and looking this much probably quite a, a um a difficult question probably to answer to be fair and maybe a little bit unfair um but I'll, I'll let you decide um, right. looking looking across uh forever roses as, as a collection of 10 songs is there one song in particular that's kind of like that you'd be able to pick out as your personal favorite um yeah that's a tough question um i think i probably like would lean towards the black angel as as maybe the kind of standout for me um but also star city serenade i think which has also been a popular one um just in terms of like the lyrics and the you know the structure and sound and and kind of yeah, I think I think I'll probably choose one of those two really. Um, in terms of like, I think they're both like surpassed what I expected the recording to sound like. Um, so uh, yeah, proud of those. Yeah, fantastic, great, great choices there. And obviously, the album ends uh, with Twilight Twilight Tango, which you mentioned earlier is a little bit of a nod uh, to the Rolling Stones with the with the title of the song. Obviously, it's full of, of, of fantastic uh, guitar riffs and obviously it's a really, really catchy melody as well. Um, and it obviously really ends the album on a real high point. And obviously, as we mentioned at the very beginning, we've, we've journey into the night starting off and, you know, kicking the door down, so to speak. Was it always important to finish on a similar, it's not, it's not the same style, but a similar type of song in terms of that it's a real anthem and and to quote what you said as well, to sort of like leave you wanting more as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, like obviously you can finish an album in different ways. Um, you can go with something more melodic or um, I don't know, atmospheric or something. Mm. But uh, I really wanted to end on a high and and like you say, leave people wanting more. And um, yeah, just go go out on a high really on a, on a big stomping number. Um, so that you know that's the last thing that you hear on the album so yeah that that was important to me yeah definitely so um just before we play uh twilight tango i just want to say a huge thank you jay um for coming on uh to the this is the music podcast today um but for more more importantly um for me and, and on behalf of uh well, i'm getting a quite big edit here uh, on behalf of uh, the, the twitter music uh, listening committee community even um thank you very much for releasing forever roses which for me uh is one of the albums of the year um i wish you jay continued success uh with forever roses um it's a great album which is all thriller and no filler um, and obviously, as we've mentioned, that that vinyl um, is going to be out very soon, and we will include the uh, the episode uh, Bandcamp uh, details in the episode bio as well. So obviously, don't delay, get get over and, and get it because it, it it is a fantastic album. Um, as I say, Forever Roses is available to stream on all of the usual platforms, as well as being available to order on vinyl. Um, you can head to Jay's socials for more information uh, about that and obviously his future plans which sounds very exciting with with um with another you know album um that's going to be recorded at you know across the rest of the year i'm guessing that probably looking maybe into 2023 before before we get to hear it in full i'm guessing yeah i think so um there'll be a, a few more singles before then so uh, look out for those and then yeah i think probably early 20 23 for for the album four launch i think yeah um but yeah i just want to say massive thank you for kind words that you said there and, and all your support um on like about the album but also generally um honestly means a lot and i uh, massively appreciate appreciate it and um 
huge thanks for having me on your show. Um, again, like it's, it's always a great show, always a great listen. And um, yeah, really appreciate you having me on again. So thank you. Well, thank you as well, Jay, uh, for your kind words as well. It me- means a means a lot, and to know that there are people out there that that, that do listen in. And um, as I say, thanks to everyone else um, who's listened in uh, to this very special. This is the Music Meets podcast. Um, now that it's finished, obviously, hopefully you've been listening to the songs in between properly. Uh, but if not, go and give <laughs> go and give the album a stream now, um, and we will see. Uh, you back here very, very soon for another This Is The Music Meets podcast. Jay, thanks very much once again. Legend, thank you.